Hey everyone, so there is a lot of crazy stuff happening in creative AI. And though I usually like to do deep dives, uh, frankly, there's just too much to cover. So let's have a good old fashioned rundown. So today we have a look at a pretty remarkable image to 3D platform, a Hollywood level AI image generator and a upcoming AI storyboard creator that I think offers a glimpse into the future of AI filmmaking plus a look at what's in store for the future of Kyber and the future of Mid Journey. Okay, that's a lot, let's dive in. So first up we have CSM, you can find that link below, which is a image to 3D generator. It's pretty remarkable, you can take any still image and turn it into a 3D model. It's also super simple to use, you just hit this image to 3D and then upload an image and then you're off. So as a quick test, I generated this guy up in mid journey and then ran him through CSM. And indeed we now have a 3D figure. I will say you're not necessarily looking at like, you know, Pixar level models. And I will say that there are some fails like this horrific version of me as a 3D model. Um, yeah, that's terrifying. Out of the box, I think it really flies when you're looking at it for like indie game assets. For example, here is a futuristic Viking helmet that I rolled up. Um, that is pretty good. Since you can download the mesh, if you're good at 3D, which admittedly I am not, I'm like three minutes into a Blender tutorial. Uh, that's my level of expertise right now. Um, but if you're good at it, you could probably take this mesh and use it as a great starting point. Here's another one that I generated based off of our cyberpunk woman in the snow uh, from the other day. It's pretty remarkable if you think about it. I mean, just based off that 2D front image, uh, it sort of figured out everything that needed to happen in the back, including like this, I guess a hooded cowl that's around her here. Uh, the haircut is a little bit weird. Like it kind of, you know, decided to give her a short cut bob in the back, I guess, uh, and then longer hair, but that's a style, right? For cyberpunk. I am not a games developer. I like playing games and I love talking shop with game developers about technology and in particular narrative design, but it does seem at least via this example that it is possible to generate assets within CSM and then put it into, you know, uh, a game scene at the very least, as you can see, you can see that little mouse cursor up there in the middle of the screen. So yeah, uh, this looks like it's doable. Although obviously there is a ton more that goes into creating a game. Uh, I did like this other example to somebody generated up a uh, Street Fighter Guile esque character, uh, T posed him in CSM and then ran him through Mixamo for animation. Um, yeah, this is pretty interesting. If you're interested in trying it out and generating up some game assets, proper prompter, you have no idea how many takes it took me to say proper prompter correctly. If that dude's first name is Peter, I swear to God, I'm punching him in the face. Proper Prompter has a pretty good mid journey template uh, that you can use to generate assets for CSM. The template goes uh, your subject, comma game asset, comma low poly, comma photorealistic rendering, comma smooth and shiny, comma white background. Like for example, here is an old school pirate revolver, which obviously is then rendered in 3D. CSM is completely free to use. Uh, the link to it is down below. I will give you a word of warning. The generation times are taking a few hours. So pop an image in, hit generate, and then, you know, maybe go bake a cake or roast a turkey, something that involves food. It's important that it involves food. And then when you return, uh, you'll have a 3D asset. Next up, we have Kubrick, which chef's kiss on that name. Uh, they are looking to be a solution for 2.5D cinematic environments on higher level productions. But I do think that there are use cases for creators at every production level. So kind of stepping through their platform, there is a lot going on here. They're stable diffusion based in terms of their image generation, but what they do offer is that they have image segmentation. So you could take say this image of this rail car and you know very quickly remove the background, replace it with whatever, and then they have depth maps included as well. Uh, there's also layers in the segmentation. It looks like a ton of them too. Uh, in this example, up to 16. Where it all comes together is when you take your segmented sections, bring them into something like Unreal or some other 3D platform, uh, and you can create sort of these virtual background sets. You can see that like you know the foreground, the midground, and the background uh, are all separate elements. 
and now you have this parallaxing effect. You can check out their full video, which is linked below, but one of the things that kind of stood out to me is, say in this frame where you know we have the LED background and that camera, I don't know what camera that is, but I'm just presuming it costs more than my car. I'm pretty sure that camera is motion controlled, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, but it's essentially, it follows a pre-programmed path. One of the things that I noticed in the video is that on the background LED wall, um, you have these sort of different square inlays that does have me wondering if that doesn't have to do with the perspective of where the camera is shooting. It's particularly noticeable in this wider shot. You've got, you know, these multiple inlay squares that look for the most part to be the same shot or at least from the same location. But when you really look at it, um, it is kind of a patchwork, right? I'll say that that level of studio shooting, motion control and background LED screens is above my pay grade but I do find it all very fascinating. And I think for most of us who probably don't own an LED wall in our homes, Kubrick still has a lot to offer, including in-painting and out-painting and upscaling up to 8K. That's right, 8K, that's crazy. It does make sense though, because you would need that level of resolution in order to fill a giant 8K screen. And just to give you an idea of that scale, um, they have this up on their Twitter. This is super cool. Obviously the mountains, uh, the projection is all AI generated. Um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Kubrick is currently in beta. Uh, the link to sign up for it is down below. In full disclosure, I am currently speaking with the developers about getting a look at it. So if you're interested, please hit the subscribe button and hopefully in a few weeks, uh, I'll be able to deep dive into it. Very briefly, if you did not catch the news, Pika Labs is now in full open beta, which means anybody can sign up for it and just start generating wacky, weird AI video. You can check out my rundown on Pika, which also had some prompt tips in it. Or if you're looking for some inspiration, I did a video last week featuring some of the best AI videos that have been released recently. Um, it's a lot of fun. A lot of them were made in Pika, so that link is below. Continuing on with AI filmmaking tools, we have Storyblocker, which is a phone app. And that kind of confused me for a minute until I think I figured out what's going on with it. So let's take a quick look at the video. As a quick note, I did have to swap out the audio. So I think it looks pretty cool. And I actually kind of like the template styles that it has, particularly the uh, Grand Theft Auto one and the uh, sort of Metal Gear Solid one. So where I think this gets really interesting is obviously we have an import button here. Um, and it's too early to say, you know, what file format you were going to be importing in. But if we can import, say, a character from CSM into this, you can have your own custom characters. Or this is something that we might be able to use in conjunction with Gen 2 or Pika as sort of a storytelling bridge until we get to the point where we have longer and more controllable outputs for both of those platforms. So in the materials, I didn't see a way to animate your characters, although there must be a way to pose them considering uh, this looks like it's a custom uh, model. And obviously this, she's T-posed here. And then later uh, we see the characters in non-T poses. Um, I don't know if those are just preset poses or not. But what is interesting is the fact that it's mobile based is uh, I think due to the fact that you're sort of working on a virtual set. I've always loved the idea of virtual sets. So this one in particular has me very excited. Uh, Storyblocker is currently in beta. It will launch this summer. As a bookmark alert, you guys might want to check out basiccable.io, which is just kind of a database of all the various current creative AI tools. Uh, just as a quick props, I do love the logo, which is 
So very 1980s basic cable, it's great. Moving over to AI music, have you guys tried Suno yet? It is so much stupid fun. It's Discord based. The way it works is that you just come into this chirp alpha channel and then do forward slash sing, and then it'll have a pop-up where you just enter your own lyrics. I gave it the lyrics to a certain world famous song, hit submit, and this is what we get. The songs that Suno generates are about 30 seconds long. You do have this option of this little fast forward button here um, to continue the song on. If you hit it, it'll another pop-up will come up asking you for more lyrics. Um, though I have generally found that, that they don't actually splice together though. It's kind of like using a seed. They're very similar, but they're not, you know, beat to beat. Now, one thing you don't really have control over what genre Suno is going to give you, but I did talk to some of the mods and essentially it kind of works by text recognition. So for example, in this one where we start off with an AO digital Yeezy, um, we get hip hop. AO digital Yeezy Steezy on a worldwide screen AI to prodigy. Yeah, I'm AO digital Yeezy. And obviously that's because Suno recognizes AO and uh, probably Yeezy as hip hop terms. So it'll give you a hip hop beat. That said, you can always try to prompt it by giving it a bracket and a genre or a musical artist, and it may or may not cooperate. For example, because this is all ridiculous, I went over to ChatGPT and had it write up some Dragon Force lyrics because ridiculous. And then back over in Suno where I gave it a bracket Dragon Force close bracket initial prompt, and we ended up with this. Moving on with music and audio tools, we have Ultimate Vocal Remover version 5, which is free uh, and does essentially what it says it does. It removes vocals from tracks uh, and it also isolates both vocals and audio. Well, instrumentation. There are a number of different process methods here. To be honest, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of trying them out and seeing how they sound, particularly this batch size. No idea what it does, but it doesn't really take that long to process. So just kind of play around until you find an output that you like. I'll say it works about as well as most of the other AI vocal removers, except A, you can run it locally and B, it's free. Let's take a quick listen to our Dragon Force vocals. Yeah, it does have some phase issues, but that's kind of common for most of the vocal remover software out there. Also, let's take a second to remember that wasn't a real person singing. It does okay with extracting other elements. For example, here's the drums. But I will say that things get a little sloppy when you're into the mid-range instrumentation. For example, the guitars sound like this. Yeah, it's just kind of a sloppy, distorted mess of stew. But I think that's just sort of the case with stable diffusion-based music. Because it is diffusion-based, it is a little on the fuzzy, murky side. That said, don't get me wrong, this is still pretty remarkable. That said, if you're incredibly stupid like I am, you can bring all of those elements into a DAW, re-record the guitars, re-record the bass, take the drums and turn them into MIDI, uh, and then take the vocal chain and put a whole bunch of plugins onto it uh, and see if it comes out sounding a little more natural. <laughs>
Now, I am not the greatest mix and mastering engineer in the world, but to me, that sounds like a, a bad recording. All of which is to say, is it Spotify ready? No, it is not Spotify ready. Is it like phone recording of a garage band ready? Yes, it definitely is that. Moving on, Kyber looks like it has a new feature coming up called Motion. Um, from what I've heard thus far, it is just text to video currently, but it looks really good. So keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping to have a video up on that soon. And in mid-journey news, well, to be honest, there actually hasn't been a lot of mid-journey news. A lot of the office hours lately have been sort of reiterating stuff that they're working on. I do always say in these times when mid-journey is quiet that they're actually a sleeping giant. Not to say that I think anybody that is working there is sleeping very much. They're probably working very hard. They have mentioned that the web version of mid-journey is going to be a lot more streamlined, probably offering less in terms of all of the various commands. The two projects that have been mentioned in development for quite some time now are 3D and Motion. I'm very curious to see what that's going to look like uh, now that we've seen CSM doing 3D things and now that we've seen Pika doing motion things. That said, Midjourney being Midjourney, those two projects might not look anything like the platforms that we've seen. If you have any thoughts or theories, please let me know in the comments below. Someone recently put together a mock-up for a UI called Stack I want to point out this is not real, uh, but it is kind of interesting and cool. It's got some really neat ideas behind it. Uh, for example, layers in mid-journey, uh, a slider for waiting, which I think is actually kind of an interesting idea. Because this was meant to be a mock-up for a tablet or iPad UI, um, he's got a number of buttons here for the various functions from Seeds, Tile, Niji, etc. And then he added in some voice to prompt uh, functionality, which I think is actually kind of a fun idea. Again, I want to point out that that is not real, but I think that there are definitely concepts within that that we might see in a web UI. So that's what I have for today. Links for everything I mentioned are down below. Uh, please let me know what you think about this format. Like I said, there was just a ton of stuff that I really, really wanted to get through. So I figured we just blast them out. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.